hi so on today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make a pencil skirt but before you start making a pencil skirt i want to show you what i call the rules of fashion mathematics it's a term i coined from fashion mathematics and it has to do with everything about calculations that you need in making your outfits so it's a short word for fashion mathematics and I got came across um, came about these rules. The first rule is all round measurements must be divided by four. So all the second rule says that all horizontal or across measurements must be divided by two. And then the third rule states that all vertical or lengthwise measurements must remain undivided. Now the reason is going to be explained to you in the next video but for now let's go ahead and dig into our pencil skirt so these are the measurements that you need for your high-waisted pencil skirt you need your round high waist measurements you need your high waist to low waist measurements your round low waist measurements your low waist to hip your round hip then your high waist to knee then if the skirt is going to be longer than your knee you're going to need the full length of um, your skirt maybe longer than the knee length and all of that so this is typically what our pencil skirt is going to look like when we are done so first you need your pencil you need your eraser i'm going to be working with a marker so that i what i'm drawing will be very visible to you of course you need your measuring tape i usually like to leave the edge of my measuring tape um, removed I like to remove that edge but don't drag yours it might ruin the tape so we work with a tape graded in inches and centimeters the back of the tape is graded in centimeters the front is graded in inches so you can see the centimeter line so you have from zero to half inch from zero to one inch the long line shows you that it is a whole long is a whole number then um, the midline shows half inch then the half of the half inch is 0 0.25 inches I'm still going to have another detailed video where I get to show you how to do the tape reading so at this stage we are going to measure exactly two inches from the upper edge now that two inches does not serve any purpose. I just don't want to start from the upper edge. It's not as if I can't start from the upper edge. I can, but I think the two inches is just as a guide. Since you're a beginner, so that when you're looking through your patterns, you'll be able to explain it to yourself without so much com confusion. So after I have marked two inches from the upper part, I'm going to mark from my left now, I'm going to mark three inches. Now that three inches is going to serve a purpose, unlike the two inches I marked on the upper part. So I'm going to mark three inches. I'm note, I'm not just marking the three inches on one part and then drawing a straight line. I'll mark it at the beginning, the middle, and then possibly the end of the paper so that I can be able to get a very good straight line. So just follow my steps and you're going to get the results that I will get by the end of this hole. So you connect. You connect your lines and now you are set to go so you see that line I marked on the upper part I'm going to call it the high waist line so these are the measurements that we are going to use I'm going to use a round high waist measurement of 28 inches sorry round high waist of 26 inches high waist to low waist 5 inches low waist to hip 5 inches then full length measurement of say 22 inches hemline of 2 inches okay sorry full length of knee length of 22 full length of 24 then hem allowance of hem allowance of 2 inches so this 5 inches now I'm going to measure from the high waist to low waist 5 inches what's that 5 inches for it is for my high waist to low waist line so what we are doing at this stage now is that we are establishing our lines all your vertical measurements you're putting them down you're marking them and you're connecting them with your horizontal line so i'm going to measure from that low waist line now which is the second line now I'm going to measure from low waist line five inches downwards 
because I want to get my hip line. My hip line is exactly five inches below my low waist line. So I'll also mark that. So this is the hip line. So by now I believe you must have already taken all your measurements. So you can see my three measurements now. I have the high waist measurement, I have the low waist measurement, and I have the hip measurement. Now I'm at the verge of taking the knee measurement. So the knee measurement is going to be 22 inches. So you start from that line. You don't just mark it on one side. You're going to mark at the beginning, at the middle, and then at the end. Now your markings don't have to go from one end of the paper to the other end. Because the, the sketch is just going to take a little part of the paper. So don't worry, as we proceed, you will understand better. Okay, so this is the knee line. So when you draw your lines, I would like you to label them so that I can see them very well. So say my full length measurement is 24. You know, my knee length is 22. So I'll just measure 2 inches below it and then mark it together. Then you connect with a horizontal line. Then the next thing I'm going to have my full length, my hemline. When you make when you make your skirt, you need to fold in, fold in the lower edge. We don't just make clothes and then weave the edges. We're going to fold in. So that folding in allowance you're going to leave is called the hem allowance. So the next line you're going to mark is two inches below the full length line, which is now the hem line. So this is the stage where we are done establishing our lines. So every time you hear about establishing lines, it means horizontal lines. You're establishing the vertical measurements horizontally. You mark them out vertically, then you connect all of them horizontally. So that's this line now, the line on my left, the three inch line now is going to be the three inch line now is going to be my center front stroke center back line so from that point at the high waist line now i'm going to do round high waist divided by four remember from our rules of fashmatics we said that all round measurements must be divided by four when i divide round high waist by four so we have six um, 24 inches we're going to end up having six and a half inches six and a half inches i'm going to mark that then i'll add an extra one inch after marking that six and a half i'll mark an extra one inch for that allowance so you can see that closely so all round measurements must be divided by four so here now we're going to do round low waist divided by four this time around you're not adding that allowance because your dart is just going to be on the high waist line so you just measure from that point from the center front center back line that line is going to our center front center back line around the waist is 28 so divide it by four to give us seven so you just mark seven please do not add an extra one inch for that allowance you don't need it on the low waist so on the hip line too we're going to mark the round hip measurements divided by four you don't need to add an extra one inch for that allowance so you mark it so let's us assume that what we have the measurements we got after dividing the hip by four is x so on the knee line you do x minus 1.5 for a loosely fitted skirt it's going to be a pencil skirt so it's going to have a kind of you know pencil shape it will slim down at the knee length kind of if you want it to be very tight, you can just subtract 2 inches instead. But 1.5 inches goes just fine. Until maybe when you check your pattern, you feel like you just want it to be a little tighter. You can now use 2 inches. So that uh, X minus 1.5 inches, you mark it on the knee length, you mark it on the full length, you mark it on the hemline. So after you mark it, you're going to start connecting with your ruler. So I'm going to connect the point where I marked on my high waist to my low waist, from high waist to low waist, straight line. You don't need a curve right now. So you connect them, just a straight line. Then from the hip, you connect to the knee length. You 
then from the knee length you connect to the full length line and then you connect to the hemline it is very easy so now you can see that the shape of the skirt is coming out the woman shape now this is representing one part out of the four parts just four parts of the skirt don't worry you'd still get because we use this now we know we divided by four so we use this now and then we cut the other parts of the skirt so um from okay so we're going to do the sewing allowance allocation when we start making this dress this skirt we're going to turn the sides of the lining with 0 0.5 inches now our zip shaping we're going to shape our zip so that it sits better with 0 0.75 inches and then the side sewing allowance is going to be two inches by the time you add all those things together you end up having a total of 3.5 inches so that's what we mark so you just mark from each point you mark at 3.5 inches and then you connect it with your you connect it with your metal rule now if you notice the sewing allowance is evenly added you don't add four inches on some parts and add three inches on some parts and add you're going to end up changing the shape of the skirt the aim is that when we are done making the skirt everything is going to be evenly fitted looking nice and lovely okay so we just connect it to so still follow the normal shape of the skirt and then at the edge because we are going to fold the hemline upwards maybe we can add half inch on that edge okay so this is our center front line it is also serving as the center back line okay so from the center front center back line at the high waist point we're going to measure exactly 1.5 inch zip allowance it is not our sewing allowance it is our zip allowance so you mark it on the lowest line hip line just mark it on all your lines then you connect it with a straight line How beautiful it looks now so our skirt is almost done but there's something you have to know about this skirt we want our zip to sit very well if you touch your back you feel a kind of hollow at your back like it's not straight it's like there's a slanting inwards so we want our zip to sit in well so now I've labeled this pattern the beginning of our zip allowance and all of that so we just called a and we just call that point a and b so i'm going to find the midpoint of a and b which is 0 0.75 inches you can see my point right so that's half of 1.5 inches so i'll just mark that point what i'm doing right now is called zip shaping i'm trying to make a slant so that our zip will sit very well so i'll connect it to the hip line And then I'll connect it straight to the knee line now this connect the act of connecting that point from the hip line to the knee line is called butt shaping that is more like buttocks shaping I want to get a cute shape for the buttocks not a situation whereby after making the dress the skirt you can't find the buttocks you just want it to give a curvy shape for the buttocks so that now is the back so if you check your back you see it has that slant okay here is the buttocks and then this is like the laps and then the leg so that's the shape we're trying to draw in and that's the essence of doing all of this so we're going to connect from the hip line to the knee line okay so you see how it is so now we have done our zip shaping between a and b 
we have connected it to the hip because you don't want to reduce the size of the buttocks the hip bags the buttocks so you don't want to reduce the size so now you have this and the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to insert our overlap so for us to insert our overlap most times i like to measure from the base that's from the hem allowance say nine and a half inches but in a situation whereby your skirt is short you can't use up to nine and a half just measure about seven inches from your measure about seven inches from your hip line to the point where you want your slits to start why because you don't want your buttocks to show when you put your slits on the outfit so that's why i had to mark that seven inches so you just mark a line across okay you see how beautiful it looks this is the end of our pattern for okay this is not exactly the end we're still going to mark out the darts so but generally this is actually the end of the major the major pattern for the pencil skirt all i need you to do right now is to just go back to your pattern paper play this video and then start watching it and following me step by step i'm very sure you're going to get this it's going to be very beautiful it's actually very easy my teaching methods are so easy to follow so just take time do it by yourself then show me i would like to see what you've done and make corrections okay so remember i labeled my pattern earlier on i labeled a b so i'm now calling the end of the pattern before the sewing allowance i'm calling it c so i'm going to measure the distance between b and c remember that distance is distance of high waist divided by four plus one inch that allowance so i'm going to measure it and divide it by two because i want to find the perfect position for the dart so i found the perfect position and that's like 3.75 or thereabouts so i've marked the dart so you're going to mark it on the lowest line you're going to mark it down so you just drag it down so this line i'm drawing now is a dart line so remember we added a dart allowance of one inch so we're going to share that one inch okay we'll, we'll just come down by seven inches the dart length to be seven inches below the high waist position so we're going to share the dart okay so we'll call that line d that's the dart line so we're going to share the dart half inch to the left and half inch to the right giving us a total of one inch okay so you take your tape you mark half inch to the left and half inch to the right so you still take your meta rule and connect to the end of the dart so a dart is typically a triangle so everything that you're going to meet in the course of this training is the work of a triangle so you can see it we just want to give it a human shape so we just curve like you just use your hand and smoothen it out if you have a french curve you can just curve it there but you don't need much work there so just along the sharp areas we just get smoothen it out there's nothing there's no much big deal there so towards the zip area you know just smoothen out the buttock shape if I want to shape that zip area further, I can just come in by say one centimeter, just midway. I'll find the midpoint and then along the lowest line, then come in by one centimeter. That if I want to shape it further. Okay, so you connect it like so, and then we can just add half inch at the edge of the hem allowance. 